welcome back to our podcast. My name is Seema Anand and I'm here today with Dr. Oishi Das, who is a medical consultant in London. And today, Dr. Das will be answering a lot of questions that all of you have sent in on HPV or the human papillona virus. Oishi, welcome. Thank you for coming on to respond to these questions. I asked everybody out there, put this on my stories to say that if we were to talk about this subject, what are the things that they worry about? What are their concerns? There's a lot of confusion around this virus, isn't there? I don't think either of us were vaccinated. No, we're not. I certainly wasn't. And so it's a very new vaccine that was introduced in 2006. Now, I know that there is a lot of confusion around it. You told me that there are something like 200 strains of the HPV. Viruses tend to mutate quite quickly. So yes, um, as of now, there are over 200 strains of a human papillomavirus or HPV. And that means that Some of it is treatable and some of it isn't. The way I would put it is that most of them are benign. Some of them cause genital warts. Two types, especially 16 and 18, are the ones which are highly dangerous, which are the ones that cause the cancer, especially cervical cancer. Okay, so keeping all of this misinformation, the myths, the issues that come up and with no answers available, I have a whole bunch of questions for you. They may seem really, really basic, but I think those are the ones that we need to answer first. So the one that came in the most was, till what age can you get the vaccine and how many doses of the vaccine do you need? So if the vaccine is given before someone is sexually active, then you only need the one dose, one dose or maximum two doses. In UK, we only give one dose to secondary school girls aged between 9 to 14. The vaccine can be given up to the age of 45, but beyond the age of 45, it really becomes irrelevant because you would have contracted the vaccine, uh, sorry, the virus anyway. So if you have it before you are in any way sexually active, you can get just the one dose and that's fine. Yes. But once you have become sexually active, you need how many doses? So we have an accelerated course for people, high-risk people such as HIV positive people, which which, um, you can give the vaccine, three doses of the vaccine within a year. Obviously, once you're 15 years old and you become sexually active, then we give two vaccines, two doses of the vaccine, either six months or a year apart, up to two years apart. And then, as I said, for high-risk groups or HIV-positive people, you can give up to three doses. And those three doses would be within one year, but sort of spread out over the one year. Okay, next question. What if you're no longer a virgin? Should you still take the vaccine? It's kind of a sequel to the previous question. And also, what do we mean by virgin? Virgin to most means that if you have had penetrative sex, however, you can acquire HPV even without penetrative sex. So even with vigorous rubbing of the genital area or oral sex or sharing sex toys, you can contract HPV. So I would rather say that if you have, haven't had any sexual experience, it's better to take the uh, vaccine before that. That's why we roll it out to girls about nine years of age exactly okay but suppose you have had some kind of sexual experience whether it's vigorous kissing or even if i'm quite surprised to hear that just the vigorous rubbing of the genital area without penetration even that you're saying counts in this but even if you've done all that, should you still take the vaccination? If you feel you are at risk, I would say take it because vaccine is highly efficacious, especially if given before you're sexually active. But if you feel, for example, the queer community or sex workers, HIV positive people who are considered as the high risk group, we would still offer the vaccine. Okay. What if you're monogamous? Again, that is a little bit of a gray area. I might think I'm monogamous, but who knows what what's going to happen down the line or maybe i'm in a monogamous relationship right now however i might have had previous sexual partners or my partner might have had previous sexual, sexual part- partners yes. so it's 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 a gray area so again i would say get the vaccine because it 
is highly efficacious. Also, I think going back to your previous point that it's not just, we think of monogamy in the same way as the word virgin, that it's to do with penetrative sex. But you're saying that even if you've had like vigorous kissing or rubbing of genitalia or all sorts of things. Or so, oral sex. Or yeah. oral sex, yeah. um, in which case, if you're still thinking that comes under monogamy, um, it could yeah. be anything. So the definition is so is open, so to, fluid. Yeah. Yes. So I think the the answer to that is, even if you think you are monogamous, um, if you feel that you are at risk, I would advise getting the vaccine. Okay. Now the next question for me is a little bit confusing. It says that if your partner's HPV test is negative. Does that mean that you will also be negative? So just to clarify a point here, there are no tests for HPV. Cervical screening is the only way to detect HPV. There are no blood tests. So when you say my partner, are you talking about a female partner who has had cervical screening? Because we don't really test men for HPV because there aren't any tests. So how do you find out if a man has HPV? You can't. They can be completely asymptomatic carriers. We can be infected with HPV and our body's immune system tend to clear it up over two years, two to three years. But you never know at any point in time whether I'm carrying the virus or not. It's, it's not possible to know. And that is why the vaccine is so important. I cannot stress the importance of that. So just to come back to this one again, um, what happens if the male partner in the relationship has HPV, contracts some form of cancer, because I'm assuming that they mm -hmm. can get yes, it. They can. So the only way you find out is when they get the cancer. Correct. Gosh, that's dangerous. That is dangerous, and it's quite scary. It's very scary. Yeah. Okay, so that brings me to the next point. Should and men... Just, uh, to interrupt Seema, you will get cancer quite a long way down the line. You don't contract HPV and immediately in two to three years, you get cancer. It happens over the years very slowly, which is even more dangerous. So um, if I have been carrying HPV in my system, it takes some time for me to show the signs of cancer. And there are six types of cancer related to HPV. Okay. Well, I guess, like I said, it brings me to the next yeah. question. Should men get the HPV vaccine? I would say everyone should get the HPV vaccine, but... Obviously, very re little research um, has gone into HPV vaccine since its introduction because it's a new vaccine. It was only rolled out in 2006 purely because of the evidence we had at the time um, that 100% of cervical cancer was related to HPV 16 and 18. And that was research-based and confirmed. That's why it was rolled out to the girls. Okay. However, men can contract HPV. And that is related to penile cancer, anal cancer, and oropharyngeal cancer. So, yes, men are at risk of cancer from HPV. So they should have the vaccine. Um, can you get HPV from vaginal sex as well or only oral and anal sex? You can get HPV from any sex. It doesn't have to be penetrative sex. Um, so just to reassert our point, which we talked about a little earlier. Yeah, yeah. earlier. It doesn't have to be penetrative sex. Any vigorous, vigorous rubbing of the skin, of the genital area, oral sex, you can acquire HPV through any kinds of sex. And you said also, I just want to reiterate this, that HPV stays in your system for about two to three years and then it sort of self-exits? Our body usually clears up the HPV or our body's immune system clears up the HPV. But how long it takes, we are not sure. It does say in about two to three years. So you're saying that if somebody gets HPV, more than likely, it will also exit their system. So our or bodies, can they just get reinfected with it during that time? That's the thing. So obviously, our body's immune system should be able to take care of it, should be able to get rid of it in two to three years. However, the more dangerous forms of HPV, which is 16 and 18, are probably more difficult to clear up and that's why we get the cancer and yes you, you're quite right there might be chances of reinfection okay so that of course will mean that it'll stay in your body for longer yeah. okay or 
we are acquiring it again rather. Okay, now I feel like we've answered this one, but I think we need to say this actually um, in so many words. Somebody's asked, can you get cancer from HPV? Yes. So the vaccine was rolled out in 2006, purely based on the research that almost 100% of cervical cancers are related to the types HPV 16 and 18. So it does cause cervical cancer. It also causes oropharyngeal cancer, anal cancer, penile cancer, vulva cancer and vaginal cancer. So there are six types of cancers related to HPV. And so the answer to that particular question is yes, absolutely. Absolutely. HPV can definitely cause cancer. Correct. Can HPV develop if you're free of any virus contamination? I'm not sure what that means. I mean, how can you prove viral contamination? As I said before, we were discussing another question that there's no test to detect HPV apart from cervical screening. So, and it's such a prevalent virus and that is so contagious. There are over 200 types and it's highly contagious. We all get some form of HPV in our lifetime. So I don't know what that means. There is a high risk of transmission and acquisition. Um, how do we detect HPV? There are no blood tests to detect HPV. In fact, there is no other test to detect HPV. Um, the only way to detect HPV is through cervical screening. So that means that it is only women who can be tested for HPV. Correct. I know we've said it before, but I think a few times of repeating it with different yeah, questions absolutely. is so important because sometimes people feel that they asked a question and it's more important yeah. that their question gets yeah. answered. Okay. Can men get it and then transmit it to a woman? Absolutely. Again, I think we, this is again, a kind of a sequel to the previous questions. Um, we all can get HPV. We can all get infected with H HPV and we can transmit it to each other. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. Can it still transmit after treatment? Absolutely. We can get, we can be reinfected. And after treatment, I think we are talking about genital warp. I would imagine, yeah. Because yeah. like you said, there is no other, uh, the other treatment would just be treatment for cancer. Correct. So we so. can treat the warts, but we are not killing the virus itself. So okay. we have to be very careful what we're talking about here. So warts are the tiny blebs or skin growth we see um, around the genital area. We can freeze them, but we cannot kill the virus. So we, we are not treating the virus, we are treating the warts. Which means that, yes, even if you've had the warts frozen, you still have HPV and it Correct. can still transmit. Is HPV curable? So HPV is not curable. There's no medicine to cure HPV. Um, we can treat the warts, but we cannot kill the virus. Most of the HPV strains, there are over 200, as I said, our immune system of our body eliminates them over time. However, type 16 and 18 causes cancer. They're harder to eliminate. That is why the importance of vaccination, this is a very good example where prevention is better than cure. Because literally you can prevent it, but Correct. you can't cure it. Correct. It is uncurable. Now, the next question I think we've answered this already, but I'm going to ask it again yeah. because the more times we say something, Absolutely, the better it is. Yeah. It says, does the efficacy of the vaccine vary between people who have been sexually active and those who have not been sexually active? Absolutely. So the efficacy of the vaccine is best if you're vaccinated before sexual exposure. That is why in the UK and in the US, the vaccination program is typically targeted towards women or girls rather aged between 9 and 14 and then it the efficacy falls a little bit as soon as they are 15 and above so the sooner you give them the vaccine the better and you were telling me that the percentage of the efficacy Drops falls quite, quite drastically yeah. doesn't it yeah. so um as soon as you can get it as a younger person correct the better it is correct. People get HPV even after getting vaccinated. Shed some more light on the prevention and management. So the HPV vaccine is cons con consists of typically a few strains only. Um, different countries have different kinds of vaccine. In UK, we have only one type of vaccine, which is protecting you against 
the vaccine strains 16 and 18. So when we are talking about people can get infected with HPV even after vaccine, I'm guessing you're talking about the other strains. I but guess, it yeah. does protect you 100% against 16, type 16 and 18. So anything about the management? So if you get genital warts, some of the vaccines um, in other countries I'm aware of also protect you against genital warts, against okay. those strains. But if you do acquire genital warts, you can freeze them off. And that's about the best that you can do. That's correct. Right. What about things like condoms and stuff? So condoms protect you from other STIs, but not from HPV. Because HPV is transmitted via skin-to-skin -skin contact, condoms will not protect you from acquiring it or transmitting it. Um, even if you have penetrative sex and you're wearing a condom, the outer part of your genitals rubbing together Correct can still yes. actually cause yes. HPV. My God, that this is, is so scary. Absolutely. This is also why just sex, sharing sex toys is transmitting HPV. It's really, really worrisome. And you can understand why people get so distressed because I don't think that there is enough of this information out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Can genital warts cause oral warts? Can you permanently get rid of the warts? And do genital warts happen to everyone with HPV? So I'll answer, I think there are three questions in yeah. one question. So can genital warts call, cause oral warts? You can get oropharyngeal warts from HPV. So genital warts are obviously in the genital area, but you can get oropharyngeal warts from oral sex. That's number one. Okay. So HPV can cause both types of warts, whether it's oropharyngeal or genital. Maybe they meant that if you have genital warts, does it automatically give rise to oral, uh, no, oral warts? No, no, no. So it has to be skin to skin contact of the particular area. So if you have had oral sex, you will, you, you are more at risk of getting oral warts or pharyngeal warts. Okay. Uh, coming to the second question, which was, it says, can you permanently get rid of the warts? If you freeze them? Yes, there is a chance you can get rid of them. But obviously, as I mentioned before, um, that we are not killing the virus. We are getting rid of the, the warts, warts only, so they can recur, especially in the first three months of treatment. And the third one? Do genital warts happen to everyone with HPV? No, most HPV infections are asymptomatic. Okay. So some of us will be carriers without showing any signs, and some of us might get genital warts. So you could literally be carrying the virus, but not actually have yeah any signs yeah, of it because as you can see the, uh, we keep repeating it and i think the more we repeat the more you know we grasp things um there are more than 200 strains it's a highly prevalent virus and very contagious so most of us will have this virus in our body and some of them some of us will show signs most won't are there any telltale signs of hpv or any other stis again it's a little bit of a vague question. Uh, I, I'm guessing the question here is, can you tell if someone has HPV? No, you can't. Unless okay. you see quite visible genital warts, then no, you or, can't. Or oral warts. Oral warts, no. Uh, and the second part And they that, basically said, any other STIs? Is they, there a way of telling that? Well, if you, in our clinic, if you come with genital warts, we'll always test you for other STIs because there is always a risk. Yeah. Um, and of course, there are so many other STIs that correct. each one manifests differently. Absolutely. So th that's another question for another time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but if you fear that there is some kind of STI, I think you always have to be really careful to have yourself tested for other STIs. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Better get tested and treated than leave it. Absolutely. Then. Do you have to test for HPV before taking the vaccine? No, you don't. Because as I said, there's there no is no test. test. No. But let's say if you, there was, let's say if you had genital warts, mm -hmm. and the person knew that they have gen genital warts, and from that they know that they have HPV. With having the warts, can you get the vaccine? Is so, it? I guess the point is that they're trying to make is: is it safe to have the vaccine when you have the genital warts? You, the vaccine is safe. Full stop. However, the efficacy here is the question, I, I suppose. Um, there are certain age groups where we would still vaccinate, even if they are past that age bracket. 
for example, high-risk groups like people who are HIV positive, sex workers, the queer community, we do assess on a case-by-case -case basis and we can offer the vaccine. Until the age of 45 years, after you reach 45, it becomes practically impossible to yeah, do I anything mean, about it. Yeah, yeah, because the efficacy is gone. We, you would have acquired whatever you are going to acquire by that time. Okay, so I guess the answer is no, you don't have to test for HPV uh, before you get the vaccine. Can HPV be spread through non-sexual ways? Non-sexual ways, again, um, in a broad range, I don't think so. The way it's spread via skin-to-skin -skin contact, you, it has to be a prolonged contact and it has to be through vigorous rubbing of the skin, which is only possible when you're having sex, when your genitals are in contact, close contact with each other and there's vigorous rubbing. I got one question actually saying, can, it, can we pass it on by holding hands? not just holding hands again if you have visible warts in your hands and there is a prolonged contact with a bit of rubbing then possibly yes that's the only example i can think of because there was a, there was a very particular question that was put to me there is another part to this question can a mother give it to her baby you you mentioned that vigorous rubbing of skin can um, transmit the virus but if you have a baby and you're hugging and kissing the baby a great deal, would that transmit the virus to the baby? I haven't come across any such example. But again, nothing is impossible given the prevalence of the virus. Um, and it, it's, it's highly contagious as well. The only thing I can think of, I would say in a broad sense, no. Because it's not that kind of skin-to-skin -skin rubbing or vigorous contact that a mum and baby but what share. about if you had oral warts that's the one thing i was going to come to if you have visible oral warts there is a chance but you would treat that anyway won't you you would immediately seek help and advice if you see any visible warts and you would consult your doctor about it and get it treated so if a person had visible oral warts would she be able to hold the baby would then is it possible in that situation from hugging cuddling not necessarily kissing the baby uh i will really judge it on a case-to-case -case basis okay uh depends on how bad the warts are uh most women or any individual any human being will notice the warts straight away because it's right there on your face uh, and you will want to get them treated i would say yeah, avoid kissing anyone not just your baby until that's that's sorted i know that the research is ongoing yes but you can understand why there's so much panic and yes. nervousness yes. amongst people yeah. um because even with somebody from the medical community you know we still don't have all, all of the, answers. the answers no no we don't yeah gosh and finally just as the last question over here what is the risk of leap to remove HPV precancer cells, and are there any alternatives? So, LEAP, just to clarify, LEAP is the procedure, surgical procedure that's been asked here of treating precancerous cells that are detected in the cervix. Now, to answer this particular question, I'm not a surgeon. So, when you are detected with precancerous cells or even cancer of the cervix, it depends on what grade it is where it is which part of the cervix cervix is affected and then you have to have this consultation with the surgeon who will give you the options who will give you the surgical options and discuss the risks with you but for me personally if i have cancer i would not think of the risks of a surgical procedure i would want to get it treated as soon as possible but this is a question that is best answered by the surgeon who's going to do the procedure. You were saying, are there any alternatives? There are alternatives. One of them is the cone incision of the cervix. But again, it depends on which part is affected and what grade it is. So there are different grades of um, yeah, CIN and the cancer itself. Thank you so much, Oishi, That's for right. all of these, uh, all of this information. I have to say that I've learned a lot today from you because you, you just don't realize how little knowledge and information actually exists and so it's no wonder there's so much nervousness amongst the people themselves 
Absolutely. But um, we hope that this has been of use to you. If you have any further questions, we will be including Dr. Das's um, contact details in the caption below. So you can, of course, write to her. But really, we do suggest that if you have any questions, it's best to go and see your own doctor, get somebody to examine you in person. Absolutely. Social media consultations are really not the best way to go forward. This is great for information sharing, but it's not your way forward for a treatment. Absolutely. Especially if you have symptoms, somebody has to examine you. If you found this useful, do as always comment, like, subscribe, send your questions in to me at info.seema.anand at gmail.com and we will try and answer them as best as possible. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay well.